and pleasure in normally enjoyable activities. The loss of interest and pleasure in normally, there's things that people normally enjoy and they just stop losing interest in them. That's another sign of depression. 3.4% of people who are clinically depressed commit suicide. 3.4% commit, and 60% of suicides are people who have been diagnosed with clinical depression. There's a strong correlation between suicide and clinical depression. And depression is twice as likely in women as in men. Some interesting facts. Mm. A depressed person, what is, what is going on? It seems that they ruminate over thoughts and feelings of worthlessness. So they spend a lot of time thinking they are worthless. Now that is never a mental state in which a Muslim should be. Or I think we have to qualify that. There is a feeling of worthlessness that is worthy and there is a feeling of worthlessness that is not. The feeling of worthlessness that is worthy, meaning it's, it's a good feeling, is the feeling that however much I praise Allah, however much I worship Allah, I cannot praise Him and worship Him as He deserves to be worshipped. You always feel that you are falling short of what is deserving and is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one should feel that they are some magnificent worshipper and that somehow you have reached some exalted station through your ibadah this is a very dangerous and arrogant place to be and in reality if that's what you think then it's defeated, in a sense, the a whole part of the purpose of ibadah. The purpose of ibadah is for you to know Allah. It's for you to know how completely and utterly and totally you depend upon Allah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that dua is the essence of ibadah. Dua is the essence of worship. Because in dua, in supplicating, in calling, in begging, and pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the essence of you showing that you need and depend on and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to ask Allah for any need, any need that you have, even if you need a, sh a lace of your shoe or a strap of your sandal, even that you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is how totally and completely and utterly you depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more a person realizes this fact, the more a person knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the essence of ibadah is this understanding how completely we depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can never praise Allah as He deserves to be praised. Never. It's impossible. Indeed, the Prophet ﷺ said, None of you will enter paradise because of your deeds. They said, Not even you, Rasulullah. He said, Not even me. Unless Allah bestows His mercy upon you. You will never enter paradise because of your deeds. It is not your deeds that will enter you to paradise. Because you can never do an amount of deeds or amount of worship. In fact, if you really think about it, how could you ever thank Allah enough for your eyes? Or for your ears? Or for really the smallest of Allah's favors to you? 
You wouldn't thank Allah enough just for one of those things. Let alone that you could do actions that deserve you to enter into Jannah. So it's from Allah's mercy that He puts people in Jannah. And in fact, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he told us, "Sadidu wa qaribu." He means be steadfast and constant in your worship, and don't be an extremist. Don't go to extremes because the extremist is destroyed. Don't go to extremes in your ibadah. Even in your ibadah, don't be an extremist. And the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hated to see people. Being extremists in ibadah. There was a woman, for example, who used to, she hung a rope in the masjid. And she used to hang on to it because she wanted to stand in prayer. And the Prophet ordered it to be cut down. We were not ordered with this, the Prophet ﷺ said. This is an extreme. Pray what you can manage. When three young men, they came and they asked, they came and they asked the family of the Prophet wasallam about his ibadah. They said, well, he's the messenger of Allah. And Allah has forgiven his past and future sins. Who are we? So one of them said, I will fast every day. Another one said, I will never marry. And the other one said, What did the other one say? <laughs> huh? I will pray, Jazakallah I will pray all night and never sleep. Jazakallah I will pray all night and never sleep. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he heard about this, he was really upset. And he called the people, he called everybody. He said, who is Fulan? Who is the one who says such and such and this and that? He said, verily by Allah, I fast some days and I don't fast some days. And I pray in the night and I sleep in the night. And I marry the women. So whoever does not follow my sunnah, and he's sorry, he said, I fear Allah the most of all of you. I have the most taqwa of all of you. So whoever does not follow my sunnah has got nothing to do with me. You can't do better as a Muslim than follow the Prophet wasallam. The best you could ever do is to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you can't do better than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet warned us, the extremists are destroyed. Don't be extreme in your ibadah. Be constant and persevere. You're not going to enter paradise because of your deeds. And the deeds that you do regularly even if they are little, these are the ones that Allah loves. Allah loves the deeds that are regular, even if they are small. These are the best deeds. Regular, constant deeds. This is the advice the Prophet ﷺ, beautiful advice, the Prophet ﷺ gave concerning ibadah. So, that is the feeling of worthlessness. But the feeling of worthlessness, brothers and sisters, that you may feel that I am no good, I am rubbish, I am, subhanAllah, you are Abdullah. You are the slave of Allah. Allah has chosen you from amongst the billions of human beings. Allah chose you and blessed you with Islam. He chose you and blessed you with Islam. I don't I think, why did Allah choose me? What? What did I do to deserve to be a Muslim? I have no idea. In fact, I can't even think of anything I could do in my life to deserve to be a Muslim. But Alhamdulillah, the, the worst of you is better than the best kafir. The worst of the Muslim. In the sight of Allah, the worst of his Servants, the people who have chosen to submit and surrender to Him is better than the best of the rebels. Because that's what the people who turn away from Allah, they're the rebellious ones. So the worst of the, the servants of Allah are better than the best of the rebels.